Good to see everybody this morning. We're glad you're all here, able to be with us today. Uh, if you're visiting with us, we want to uh, give you a very special welcome. Encourage you to come back and be with us any opportunity that you have. If you are visiting, there's some visitor's cards in the foyer. If you'd pick one of those up, fill it out. There's a basket back there. You can put it in the offering plate uh, just so we can have a record of your attendance with us. A uh, number of things going on. Uh, LTC. Uh, next Sunday, uh, the 27th at 4.30 will be Bible Reading Challenge. And then on the 28th this is the deadline to get everything in, all your paperwork, whatever needs to be turned in, turn that into Chandra. Uh, so if you're involved with that, uh, get the things kind of wrapped up uh, here for that. Uh, Secret Sister uh, information, if you haven't already, uh, pick up a, an envelope in the ladies' class. Text or call Bree and let her know who you have uh, on the Secret Sister. Also coming up for the month of March, we're, we're going to have every Monday night uh, a Bible study. Uh, Can I trust the Bible? That will be at 630. Um, child care will be provided. Meal will be provided. So uh, if you can come to that, please do so. Invite your friends, neighbors. It's certainly open to everyone. I think that will be very beneficial. Uh, there. I, I understand there's some chips, a lot of chips out in the uh, multi-purpose building that need a home. Uh, they, need a, they need a place to go. So if you'd like to get some chips, we'll do so. Um, also, on the back of the bulletin, there's a little QR code here. That's an update from uh, our work in uh, Thailand uh, with Kim Brother School. And if you would like to look at that, uh, Kim does a pretty good job of telling you what's going on and, and uh, uh, doing that. So just get your phone out and hit that QR code and, and you can uh, listen to Kim do that. Also, uh, one other thing, uh, Kim Dottery's granddaughter, uh, Keisha Applewhite, uh, received her degree this weekend. I know Keisha's worked hard on that. And uh, that's a really good deal. If you don't know Keisha, you're missing something. Uh, she's a really great person. Spot of Kim. No, I'm just teasing. Uh, we're proud of her and, and uh, for them doing that as well. A uh, number of people we need to keep in our prayers. Uh, Dennis Moore passed away this past evening, so uh, we need to keep Dennis and Kim and family in our thoughts and prayers uh, here in the, in the upcoming time, days and, and times. That's been a long, long struggle. Uh, Charles Moore, I think, is scheduled, has been rescheduled a couple of times right now. We're looking at March the 11th for his surgery. Hopefully they that works and they can get him in. Uh, keep Becky Tyree uh, from Shamrock in your thoughts and prayers. Patricia Forrester, she continues to recover and improve. Angie Taylor. Uh, Tammy Pax has another procedure tomorrow, I believe. So uh, keep, keep Jeff and Tammy in your thoughts and prayers as well. Uh, continued member Barbara Bass, Betty Barnett, uh, Mott Holman, uh, Mary Edwards, Bridget Johnson. Um, Stan Reed is out also in the uh, care center out here. Uh, his sister visits here quite often, so uh, keep Stan your thoughts and prayers. Um, Stormy Hibbler, whether baby is ready to meet the world or not, I think tomorrow is the day. Uh, so... Uh, Keep Stormy and Zach and, and uh, especially Grandma and your, and your thoughts and prayers uh, 
as, as we go through uh, the week. Um, I believe that's all the, the announcements that I have. Uh, again, we're glad to have, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I've got a note to read here. I forget, I get up here and forget what I'm doing sometimes. Um, there's a note from Cassie. She says, thank you all for your help, uh, for knowing nothing of the Bible. Thank you for your, your uh, patience with all things. I can never repay uh, all this congregation for their knowledge. This is my favorite place to be. Words cannot express the gratitude in my heart. Uh, for the first time, I feel loved for myself. At the times I fell from grace, uh, your love pulled me back to the Lord. I am inspired by so many. I love you all, and thank you, Cassie. Keep Cassie with thoughts and prayers as well uh, as we go through the coming days. Again, we're glad to have everyone here. If you're visiting, our doors are always open. Come back and be with us any opportunity that you have. Uh, Fred. Welcome to the book. The first song will be number 794. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you <laughs> bailing me out. <laughs> so this one, if you want to, seven ninety one. <laughs> That's this song that you led in the word of prayer. <laughs> well,
Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning humble, thankful for all that you do for us, the way that you show your love each and every day. We're thankful for this time here together this morning to worship you, to fellowship, to, to sing songs and study your word, Lord. We just pray that as we do that this morning, Lord, that we're, we do it in a way that's pleasing unto you, that honors you and glorifies you in every way. Lord, we're thankful for Fred's uh, willingness to lead in song. We pray for Garrett as he brings your message. Lord, we just pray for each and every one here, all those that are not with us today that, uh, that need your arms of comfort wrapped around them. Lord, we just lift them up. Those that have special needs, that physical needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs, Lord. We just come to you for, for all of those things. Pray for this community. Pray for our state and our country. Lord, we just, uh, we just look to you as we go throughout our week. Be with us as we continue this service, and we just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Phone of the book, be number 749. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Please turn with me to Genesis 22, 1 through 5. Genesis 22, 1 through 5. Now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and he arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey and I and the lad will go over there and we will worship and return to you. Good morning. <clears throat> good to see you here. Good to be here. Thankful for Fred Lane, Fred Lane singing for us. Um, glad he's back doing that. And despite the technical difficulties, um, it's just I, the way it goes. Um, technology, you can't always trust it. Um, even even uh, someone familiar with it. I did have... Um, something to read from uh, Stacy McCaslin he sent me this this morning and asked me to read this. And so I think we'll do that now. Dearest brothers and sisters in Christ, there was so much more I wanted to say when I left, but I wasn't able to. Lisa and I want, to, want you to know that we love each of you very much, so very much. And it has been such an honor worshiping and serving the Lord by your side. I'm going to miss you and the faithful church that you are. I look forward to coming around from time to time. Always keep growing in the spirit, loving one another, toiling in the kingdom, and drawing ever closer to God. The Lord is coming. We certainly do miss them. If you're visiting with us, uh, we do have services tonight at 6 p.m. I invite you back uh, for that, whether you're visiting uh, or this is uh, your regular member here. We're thankful that you're here. And uh, tonight we're going to look at more of uh, Abraham and his struggling faith. Um, so if you are uh, struggling in faith, we're going to see how Abraham conquered that. We're going to look at more of that this evening. And uh, if you're not, uh, haven't opened your Bibles, Genesis chapter 22, our scripture reading is where we'll begin. Of course, we are in the book of Genesis <clears throat> for the next, uh, still uh, the next few months. As I thought about the lesson for this week, I thought about the fact that, see now it's messing up on me. Mankind has inherent within our nature a need to worship. I need to worship something or someone. Psalm 150, verse number six says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. All the earth shall worship you. Psalm 66, in verse number four. We have within us something that we are uh, just called to worship. We, we tend to have to worship something or someone. Yeah, it's not, it's not working for me, Ken, so I don't know if it'll work for you. But here's the thing. Humans, it's been said, by human beings, by their very nature, are worshipers. It defines who we are. You cannot divide human beings into those who worship and those who don't. Everybody worships. It's just a matter of what or whom we serve. Isn't that so true? Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 8 says that people will worship materials, will fashion materials into things, will make idols out of these materials. Isaiah 2 verse 8 says that they worship the work of their own hands instead of worshiping the work of God's hands. Psalm 106 verse 19 says that they made a calf in Horeb and worshiped the molded image. 
in Exodus. We, we talked about that just last Sunday morning. They, they couldn't wait till Moses got down from Mount Sinai. It's been said at least 18,000 different objects have been worshipped by humans throughout the history of time. I find that number far too low. Because every human at some point has worshipped themselves. And so there's nearly 8 billion people today. And who, who knows how many from uh, just history in general. Every human has worshipped themselves over God many times in their lives. Luke chapter 18 verse 9 says that there are some who trusted in themselves. If we're trusting in Look again in verses 2 and 3. What did God tell them to sacrifice? Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there. It doesn't say take him and offer another sacrifice. Offer him as a sacrifice there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall tell you. What was Abraham's first thought? You want me to what? You want me to sacrifice a human? We don't do that. Normally, Abraham, we're sacrificing an animal. Okay, then further, it's not just any human. This is his only son. Yes, he had Ishmael, but this is the son, not only that, right, but the son of promise, the one that God said you would have. He waited 25 years for, we studied last Sunday morning. And God says, I want you to sacrifice him. This is the son that, that was going to bring about the many descendants, the great nation. What is Abraham thinking? That's very inconvenient. That's what God wanted. And despite his inconvenience, Abraham went and did exactly what God told him to do. Verse number three, you don't see Abraham, well, but, 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 wait, or uh, uh, that's, that's too inconvenient. So Abraham rose early in the morning and went. Number three, it was inconvenient for him to sacrifice his energy. Yes, it took time. It, it took away, it was going to take away his family. It was going to take away his energy. Verse number three. So Abraham rose early in the morning. That takes energy. He didn't have a phone alarm clock like we do today. Uh, like I do when I hit snooze about five different times. He didn't have that. He had to, to physically exert energy to wake up and get up in the morning. And then not only that, he had to split the wood for the offering, didn't he? Any of you ever split wood? I believe, I bet 90% of us or more have split wood for a fire. That takes effort. It takes energy. He had to do that. It says he did that. And not only that, then he had to saddle the donkey and take the time, take the energy to do that. Look at verse 6. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it on Isaac, his son. He took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. Wait a, wait a second, there's fire now. Does fire just happen out of nowhere? He had to make a fire. He didn't have a lighter. He didn't have fuel. He didn't have anything like we have today. He didn't have a match to just strike anywhere matches. This took energy. This was something that he had to exert. And this was after three days of walking by foot. Then he, he spends more energy on the day of worship. Verse 9 and 10. They came to the place of which God had told them, and Abraham built an altar there. He built an altar. And placed the wood in order. He bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. That takes energy. That takes effort. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. He took a knife. I think it was a sharp knife or a dull knife. Everybody knows, hopefully, in this audience, knows that the, the most dangerous knife is a dull knife. I think he had to sharpen that knife. I think so. That would take time and effort and energy to do so. Abraham sacrificed what it was inconvenient to sacrifice. Things like his time, his family, his energy. Luckily, we're not called to sacrifice our family today in the same sense, right? We're not, we're not called to go take our, our children and offer them as sacrifices, thankfully. But Abraham was. That, that's the ultimate example for us. And sometimes we think that worship is just too inconvenient for us. It doesn't fit in with what I'm doing during the week. It doesn't fit in with this and this and this. 
I don't have time for that. My family doesn't go. I don't have energy for that. Abraham could have said all those things, yet he didn't. Some might object to going to a Wednesday night worship service. And maybe I've had a long day at work or school. I just don't have the energy. Tell that to Abraham. Some object because they need to spend their energy on schoolwork because it's a school night. What's better? You tell me. Spending time with God and his people or not spending time with God and his people? Those are the two options. It was inconvenient. All proper worship will be an inconvenience to us in at least these three areas, probably more. We've got to be willing to be inconvenienced to give God the worship that he is due. We've got to be willing. Abraham was willing. All life-changing worship is inconvenient and uncomfortable. If your life isn't changed and you're probably not comfortable enough, you're probably not, uh, or you're probably too comfortable. Everything's probably too convenient. The thing is that the, the preaching is good when uh, it actually steps on your toes. Whether we like it or not, because your feet happen to be in the wrong place, if that's the case, as long as the preacher is preaching from the word of God. It's going to make you uncomfortable because it calls you to, to step out of your comfort zone and grow in your faith, which is tough to do. It was inconvenient. It's inconvenient for us to come to worship this very morning. Some of us drive here for 30 minutes just to be here. They wrangle kids just to be here. That's, that takes time, effort, energy. If it was convenient, God would say, just stay there. Number two, Abraham's worship, Abraham's worship was uncomfortable. Again, not only was it the most inconvenient worship service, I think it's one of the most uncomfortable worship services ever. Comfortable. What does that mean? It means provide physical ease and relaxation, not causing or having any unpleasant feelings. I never find the word comfort and worship in the same sentence in the Bible. In fact, most of the time, worship is done despite lack of comfort. We don't find blessed are the comfortable in the Beatitudes, at least not in my Bible. Was Abraham comfortable traveling for six days? Again, after day one, God, is this far enough? I'm uncomfortable. My feet hurt. How many of us, you go hiking or you maybe go to an amusement park or whatever it is, and you're walking around all day long. You're tired by the end of the day. Maybe you're carrying kids or pushing a stroller or whatever it might be. One day of that is enough. He's walking by foot three days there and three days back. Don't you think he could have said, you know what, God, I'm going to stop on the second day. We'll just worship here. I'll do everything else exactly like you wanted me to. It wasn't the case. God said, you need to worship here. And it requires you to go three days there, three days back. Was he comfortable sacrificing his only son. He could have said, what about Ishmael, right? Which he still, he is a father. He doesn't want to do that. Sacrificing his only son. You think he was comfortable doing that? He had never done that before. Again, luckily God doesn't call us to do that. He actually calls us to be living sacrifices, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. He calls us to be living sacrifices, he says, you don't have to sacrifice your kids. Sacrifice your lives for me. Sacrifice the things that, that and, and don't take convenience. Don't take the easy way out. Because we as Christians are living a life of inconvenience as a Christian. It would be a lot easier to just fit in with the world and go along in everything that we do. But it's inconvenient. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. And especially when it comes to worship, it's inconvenient. It's going to be uncomfortable. We'll talk about that last one in a moment. Was he uncomfortable preparing the wood and the fire? This is something he did over and over again, but they just walked three days. Then he had to, to bind up his son. This, it's getting real. He's about to, to actually lay the wood there, prepare, make the fire, and literally kill his only son, the son that God had promised him. Preparing the wood, the fire, the altar, all these things. Was he comfortable? I don't think he was. Again, he didn't have nice shoes like we probably do today. He, he was walking on sandals, maybe barefoot. I don't know.
Mary Edwards told me that she went to the tent meetings of Marshall Keeble out in Dallas. She described it in this way, in the summer with sweltering heat and little cardboard fans, which I don't know what that looks like, but I know what the heat feels like in Dallas-Fort Worth. I grew up there. I know that in the summer it gets well over 100 degrees. They were outside in a tent, and most of them probably wearing men, the full suits, women wearing dresses and large hats, as she described. Does that sound comfortable to you? Not to me. Many of us might wear uh, uncomfortable clothing to worship, not because it is what's required, but I'm telling you, I don't wear a suit and tie to, to impress anybody. I don't wear a suit and tie to impress God. I wear it because I wear something specific to a funeral, to a marriage, and I want to give God better respect than I do to humanity. Not that I'm earning God's favor in that way. I tell you, when I get home, these clothes, I change into something so much more comfortable. I don't wear a suit and tie all day long. We sacrifice our comforts, our convenience for things. I'm not saying that everybody's got to do that. I'm just saying we need to have the attitudes that they did in those tent meetings. Again, would you be here if we took the, the, the cushions out of the pews? Would you be here if there were no pews? There was no building, no AC, no heat. Worship was at six in the morning. Would you be here? All those things, combine them all. We have comforts that are afforded us that we're lucky to have, and, and it's not a sin to have those things. But over in Africa and over in other places, they don't have seats. The buildings are flooded sometimes, and they're, they're standing the whole worship service. I can't sit down. I can't stand for 30 minutes or an hour. It was certainly uncomfortable, but here's the thing, and here's the, the most important part. It was worth it all. Abraham's worship that day, and, and for those seven days, everything that it took, it was worth it. Everything, all the inconvenience, all the uncomfortability, discomfort, whatever you might call it. Abraham's worship was worth it. And, and back up for a second. What about Isaac? Isaac was part of the sacrifice. Do you think he was comfortable with all that? You think he was just allowing, not questioning Abraham? And in those moments, wait a second, you're, you're offering me? We never, we, what, what do you mean? Isaac was anywhere from 15 to 30 years old at this moment. He clearly could have overpowered his father, but what he did was he willingly submitted to that sacrifice. Don't you think he had some mental anxiety as he's bound up, as his father's about to literally stab a knife into him? Isaac considered it worth it as well. Romans 8, verse 18. Proper worship is worth the effort. This is talking about persecution, but the, but the principles apply. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Paul says, no matter what comes, no matter what kind of persecution I face, it's worth it. We're not even talking about persecution here. It's not persecution if someone comes in and takes our, our pew cushions unless they're doing it because we're Christians. But it was worth it, Paul says. It's worth everything you've got. It's worth every effort you can give. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, it's momentary, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. 1 Peter 4, verse number 13 says, But rejoice, be happy, be content to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. It's going to be worth it all. It's worth the sacrifices that we have to make, whatever those might be. If it does take sacrificing our family, our job, our time, our energy, whatever it might be, it's worth the struggle with children and grandchildren to not only bring them to worship, but to teach them how to worship. Again, bringing our children is good, but it's not good enough. Teaching is necessary. We need to teach them why we do what we do and, and, and how it is and why it is that we sacrifice our comforts for God. Again, kids are tired. They're hungry. They're, they're overall just difficult, right? But they need to know that we sacrifice our time and our energy. 
in order to fully focus on God during worship. It's not a time to sleep, eat, play around as they get older. It's worth it all. We've got to teach our children. I need, to, I need help with that. I have one. He, he's growing up. I want your help. I want your help to show him that it's worth it. Ooh, I want him to, to look up here and come up here and say a prayer and, and be able to see all these people and say, look, look. They all considered it worth it to be here. Worth the sacrifices, whatever it might be. I hope that we're not bored during worship. I hope that we're not tired during worship. We might be tired, but I hope we're giving the energy that is necessary to worship God. It's been said this way, any man or woman on this earth who is bored and turned off by worship is not ready for heaven. Why, why is that? Because that's the only thing we're going to be doing in heaven. It's worshiping God. Here's the question. Are you comfortable this morning? I'm not talking about your physical comfort. Are you comfortable with your stance with God? Are you and God right? You're the only one that knows that. Are you comfortable with that? Are you at ease? Or maybe it's God's word. It's, it's more than likely God's word has stepped on your toes this very morning. Let it change your life. Let God's word impact you towards inconvenience and, and, and discomfort so that you can be here. No matter what it is that's stopping you. To be here every time the doors are open. Despite your energy level. Despite the excuses. If you have a need this morning, won't you come forward as we stand and sing the song of invitation? <laughs> pray. Father, thank you for this time we, we have to give back to you, Father. Thank you for the talents and, and our jobs and the land you give us to use, Father. I pray that as we give back to you, Father, which is yours, that we do it in a cheerful manner and to, to be used to further your kingdom, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Song for the Lord's Supper will be number 366. By Christ's redeeming Christ, we soar, we keep the Take it as a bread that represents Christ's broken body. Let's reflect on that sacrifice as it saves us from many sins. Let's take advantage of losing that side. In Jesus' name we pray. So thankful to gather around your table. Father, we thank you for all the many blessings you provide for each and every one of us. At this time, we thank you for your son and that great sacrifice he made on our behalf. Please help us to take this fruit of the vine that represents the blood shed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We pray it be done in a manner pleasing to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
it seemed like everybody else just left things pretty well done, a pretty good job. So best I can tell, the common factor in the messing up this morning may have been me, I'm not sure. <laughs> but but I said over there and I think I may have figured out what happened. Well, I was up here running with my left hand. I'm not ambidextrous. I can't even part my hair left hand. <laughs> <laughs> if if you about me, we'd be letting the closing prayer. Then will we dismiss this song? Huh? Sing.